Trawling the oceans for fish is a sophisticated business these days, and sonar is one of the key tools of the modern trawlerman's trade. Pioneered 50 years ago to help Allied ships track enemy submarines, it is now used to pursue underwater prey of a very different kind. But the principle remains the same. Ultrasound waves, sound waves too high in frequency for us to hear, are beamed into the sea, where they bounce back off any obstacles they meet. And with the help of some clever technology to receive and interpret the echoes, an experienced operator can recognize a shoal of fish and work out precisely where and when to let down the nets. With this degree of accuracy, the trawlermen can be sure that their nets will always be full. Modern medicine, strange as it may seem, uses much the same technology to explore the hidden depths of the human body. For example, an ultrasound scan is now a standard procedure for nearly every pregnant woman. Such a scan can produce clear pictures of an unborn baby on the display screen instantaneously. But it needs a well-trained eye to recognize those familiar human features. So Dr. Chitty, what exactly are you doing? Well, I'm scanning Donna, who's uh, been coming to us for a while now. Um, and she's 30 weeks pregnant now, and I'm having a good look around the baby to see how things are today. Right. And can you explain to us what, exactly what you can see on the scan? Yep. Here I can see the baby's heart beating here. I can blow it up for you. Be large that you can see. The four chambers of the heart. You can see the two atria and the two ventricles being quite so well behaved at the moment. So there's an eye here, you can see the eyelid, the nose and lips. And there's a the sole of the foot so you can count the toes. You can see the spine. We can see the spine in two directions. This way here, the longitudinal view here, looking at the skin covering all the way down to make sure there aren't any problems such as spina bifida, which we know this baby hasn't got because we've scanned her several times before. It's clear that this technique has provided reassuring information for millions of pregnant women and has proved to be of enormous benefit to the doctors whose job it is to make sure we enter this world in the best possible condition. Ultrasound is also excellent for imaging soft tissues and is often used for diagnosing problems in organs such as the liver, the kidneys and the heart. Here we have a typical ultrasound imaging machine and this is an ultrasound probe. The ultrasound probe contains an array of piezoelectric elements which take it in turn to send a pulse of sound energy into the tissues we want to examine. The same probe detects the echoes which bounce back from the interfaces between different kinds of tissues and sends the information to a computer which assembles it all into a picture here on the screen. So, Dr. Rothenberg, what can you see? What we're doing is we're taking a longitudinal section, i.e. cutting the patient in half, looking at the liver. One can also see this structure here, which is spherical, which represents the gallbladder and you can see there are no stones within it. And if there are stones, they'd be bright speckles which cast it a shadow. Going to the side of his body, we can see this structure here, which nestles below the liver, and one can see clearly the contours of the liver, and this is the right kidney. And one can see quite clearly the difference between the renal cortex and the renal pelvis, where it's, which is bright because it's fat within it. And one can freeze the image and measure the approximate size of the kidney, which is 12 centimeters, which is normal. Have you ever noticed how the noise from a fast train changes as it speeds past you? When it's approaching, the sound waves are bunched up together and you get a high-pitched sound. 
but once it's gone past and it's traveling away from you, the waves are stretched out and the pitch drops. This is called the Doppler effect and it forms the basis of a technique for measuring how fast your blood is flowing. Jeff Kusick is a medical physicist who has worked with ultrasound for many years and he's agreed to demonstrate Doppler ultrasound for me or even on me. So Jeff, how does it work? Well this is a very simple Doppler ultrasound instrument mm -hmm. uh, and we have a probe here which transmits a beam of ultrasound and which receives the echoes from structures which are in that beam. Right. Uh, because the speed of sound in tissue is about 1500 meters a second as we know right. and the maximum speed of blood in the body is about a meter a second right. uh, which means that if we use ultrasound in the region of a few megahertz in frequency uh, the Doppler shift is of the order of a few kilohertz which is audible. Right. And that means that we can hear the Doppler signal despite the fact that we're, putting, we're using ultrasound actually going into the patient. Mm -hmm. Using some gel? We have to use some gel to exclude air from between the probe and the skin. And that's common with all other ultrasound techniques. Mm. The reason for it is that we have to exclude air because otherwise the sound will neither go into the body nor come out again. Right. And what we now have to do is to align this probe so that uh, it's pointing along the vessel. There it is. And where it is, we can hear. The whooshing sound. Whooshing sound. And there's one whoosh for each of your heartbeats. But with this very simple piece of equipment, we can start to say, say something about the nature of the blood vessels in, in the body. Machines like the one that Jeff showed us only cost about £200, and they are so small that they can easily be carried to the patient. But the information they provide is quite limited. For more detailed analysis of blood flow, you need a machine like this one. Mr. Coleridge-Smith is a vascular surgeon, and he's going to explain to us how this equipment works. Well, like the machine you saw earlier, this one also has a probe that we can apply to the patient right. in order to measure the blood flow in any particular blood vessel we choose. Uh -huh. This is attached to a box which converts the blood flow signal uh, into an electrical uh, signal that we can read using the computer well, we've seen the machine. Can you show us how it works on the patient? Certainly. I'll just uh, turn the machine on so that we can hear what's happening uh, in the blood vessels. And then, first of all, I'll examine the femoral artery in the groin at the top of the leg, and that will uh, show me how much blood is getting into the leg. This patient has uh, quite severe arterial disease, and we can hear there the blood flow in the femoral artery. On the screen, the blood flow waveform is very abnormal, going right. in uh, one direction only. This indicates that the blood is having quite a lot of difficulty getting down even as far as this level in the leg. We can now see on the screen a stored image of the uh, waveform that we were recording just now. Uh, here, the uh, blood vessel shows flow in one direction just in the downward direction, in fact, on this occasion. And uh, blood mm -hmm. accelerates as the heart beats, and then it slows down again. In a normal blood vessel, I'd expect the blood to accelerate and then to reverse during the relaxation phase, and then to return to zero. OK, thank you, Doctor. Some machines combine Doppler ultrasound with ultrasound imaging to find out how fast the blood is flowing through veins and arteries being studied on the screen. In colour flow mapping, the blood velocity measurements are colour coded and overlaid on the image of the vessel. You can see the artery push, push, and the vein is this constant flow. Alternatively, velocity time graphs may be constructed on screen and measurements read off. And that's just basically a graphical um, description of the speed in which the, sound, the motion of the blood goes. And you can freeze it and then do calculations and measure the velocity 0.78 meters per second of the blood in the carotid artery. Whether you are searching for shoals of fish beneath the sea or studying what's going on inside our bodies, ultrasound has come a long way since those pioneering days of World War II.